She's oh so good at being oh so bad. Meet sultry and sensational Joan Collins of Dynasty in the new TV Guide. Dreams of Gold, tonight at 7.30. Friday, Benson's back for the special one-hour season premiere. <laughs> when mystery hits the high seas, everyone's a suspect on Benson. Welcome to the love boat, Ben. I gotta get to the airport! The two-hour special premiere of The Quest will take you around the world. There's more to life than just cops and robbers. And starting this Friday, the lives of these four people will never be the same as they set forth on The Quest. One life to live. Have something between us, Kevin. Man, I don't know what you're fantasizing about in that sick mind of yours, but I am going to marry Larry. How come you're not married already? Back. And on the edge of night. Hi, Mr. Deborah. A clever game of chess. I'd like to see what this game looks like for myself. And with one move from Raven, it's checkmate for Sky. One life to live. The edge of night. Weekdays. tuned for the edge of night next the people's court today at 4 30. <clears throat> can i carry you away from that thing long enough to look at me you look lovely camilla good enough for your guests oh yes i promise you sky will approve believe it or not darling i did not dress with your friend sky whitney in mind no i have another interest in this dinner party and who's that? You know perfectly well. I want to meet this fascinating woman you told me about, this creature that has you so intrigued. I have a feeling that Raven isn't the sort of woman that women will like. Oh, I see. In that case, she's the kind of woman men go crazy about. Don't judge her in advance. You wait and see. Come in. Miss Alexander is here, Mr. Devereux. Oh, yes, Victoria. Would you show her in, please? Raven, how wonderful to see you. And you must be Camilla. Miss Alexander. Oh, just call me Raven. We're not as uh, formal as you are in Britain. Oh, I'm not British. I was born and raised here. Well, I thought because of your accent... My passport has an eagle on it just like yours, Raven. Our father decided that even if we were educated or lived abroad, we'd always retain our American nationality. He felt there were certain practical aspects. That he was a very practical man. Well, I'm very sorry I never had a chance to meet him, but he must have been very handsome to have produced such handsome children. Ian resembles him more than I do, especially in personality. Really? What was he like? Charming, willful, and very impulsive. Given to passionate flings for all sorts of things and all sorts of people. So, I take it that Schuyler has not yet arrived. No, but he should be here shortly. You know, he was going to bring me here, but I told him just to come on his own. I think he's just arrived. So tell me, Camilla, did you uh, meet Schuyler in Europe? Yes, as a small, unpleasant child. Camilla only remembers one visit from the Whitney family when we were children, and that was before she came back to the States. Obviously, it was a very unpleasant visit. He was a thorough snob, even at the age of nine or ten. He hasn't changed a bit. Mr. Whitney is here, Mr. Devereaux, with his guest. Guest? Oh, Ian, I'd like to introduce Miss Valerie Bryce. Edge of Night is brought to you by Tide.
the extra action and tide means dirt can't hide. And by Cascade, the dishwasher detergent that leaves dishes and glasses virtually spotless. Every day, people face the moment of truth. The moment they decide if their dishwasher detergent did the job. If I have to rewash the glasses. Or didn't quite do the job. Spots. I have to rewash the glasses. That moment when. There better not be spots on the glasses. There are spots on the glasses. Try Cascade. See, most detergents can leave drops that spot, but Cascade's sheeting action leaves glasses virtually spotless. That Cascade moment of truth. Look at that shine. Now that's beautiful. For virtually spotless dishes, try Cascade and make that moment of truth your moment of glory. You did great, Cascade. How far does a mom have to go to see your kids clean? All the way to die, country! Where a toughest test of clean is below the age of 10 and the same clothes get dirty over and over again. My extraction kid needs an extraction tie. Kids can be tough, tough all around. Even Pink and Sweet has trouble keeping neat, so go ahead and splat them. Splotch them, splash them, splatter them. Claim your spot tide, get some clean. Tide's action-packed, one top clean. And if it'll clean these kids' clothes, It'll clean most anything. Here's your joy and pride. Same kids, same clothes. Spanking clean with Tide. An extra action kit needs an extra action Tide. Tide country! Clean your spot, Tide. Get some clean. Thanks, Joe. There's one thing they're sure about, Derek. The document they call the phone book hasn't been sold as yet, which means it hasn't been compromised. That's their jargon for any secret intelligence that's been seen by unauthorized persons. Oh, Mike, how can they be so sure? If it had been, there would have been repercussions by now. Agents in place would have been exposed. Don't forget, Jefferson Brown left this country more than two years ago. Mike, I don't understand. Why hasn't this list been sold? It must be priceless. We don't know that either. But they're convinced that a copy of that list exists. Somebody somewhere has that phone book. And as far as Washington is concerned, that's the equivalent of someone having 50 atomic missiles in his basement, armed and all ready to launch. Well, that's why the Foley's were so anxious to figure out what Jeff Brown's diary meant. They thought it was going to lead them to this list. And that's why Cameron is just as interested. Huh. Oh, wait, here, speaking of the Foley's, I should show you this. It's a laboratory report about the scene of the accident. They worked pretty fast, didn't they? Well, I asked them to make that top priority, but they were thorough. They checked every square inch of that car, and they even sifted through some of the ash. And? Nothing. No trace of the diary at all. Well, that's disappointing. It's not even a chance that it was totally incinerated. So, what do you conclude from this? I conclude he didn't have the diary on him when he died. Which means that he uh, could have destroyed it, or passed it along to someone else, or... Mike, it's got to still be at the Devereaux house. Of course, Foley left there in a hurry. He probably didn't have a chance to take it with him. Great, let's get out there as fast as possible. There's no time like the present. Joe, that should do it. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Are you sure that's all you want? I mean, you're going to be starving later. That's all I can handle. Hey, you only had one fortune cookie. Hey, what is this? I just want the salad. I'm dieting, OK? OK, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get you those drinks. Thanks, Thanks a lot. You know, you're quite a bit different this evening than you were this afternoon. I know it's my fault I didn't pick the ideal environment for a marriage proposal. It's pretty difficult for a guy to get down on his knees in a Chinese restaurant. It was a beautiful proposal. Well, thank you. But I think I could have picked a more suitable place. I mean, we should have gone up into the hills and waited for a beautiful sunset. Or maybe you should have found another girl. <laughs> Poppy, don't say that, please. I'm sorry. Maybe this is the wrong time and place, too. Look, I don't care about the time and the place anymore. I just care about the woman. You still haven't answered my question. I think I at least deserve an answer. Yes, David. You deserve a whole lot of things. You deserve the best of everything, the very best. That's very nice. But you still haven't answered my question. I love you, Damien. Well, that's more like it. I'm crazy about you. I've told you that a hundred times and in 99 different ways. And why am I afraid to hear the rest of your statement? Because you know what I'm going to say. It's what I have to say. It wouldn't work with us. It wouldn't last 
more than a month, maybe oh. two, and then you'd find out that it was a mistake, and you'd find out what a dummy you married. Hey, cut it out. I asked you please not to talk that way about yourself anymore. It's just not true. Besides, it's just a facade that you put on because you know that Eddie Lorimer and his friends like to hang around with women who play dumb. There. There's another reason why it wouldn't work. Eddie and his friends, people like that, they're my kind of people, Damien. Don't you realize that yet? I grew up with them. I lived with them all my life. I'm like they are. How can you ask me to change? I'm not asking you to change anything but your name. Right now you're not, but later. Much later, you're going to want me to change. And you're going to want me to be different. You want me to be part of your crowd and your kind of people, and that wouldn't work. They won't like me. I wouldn't like them, and, and the whole thing would fall apart before you even know it. Please. Damien, try and understand. Hiya, Sydney. How you doing? Hi, Eddie. You want a drink? Yeah, I want a drink. I want a nice stiff drink, something different. I'm out to celebrate tonight. Oh, yeah? Celebrate what? Well, I was at a closing today, as a matter of fact. I was at two closings today. I sold the scrapyard, got myself a ton of cash, and I put the padlock on the art gallery forever. Not bad for a day's work, eh? Oh, so you really did it, huh? All set to start a new life. Yep, that's right. I feel like I got the whole world in front of me, and you know something? It feels nice, too. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Eddie? Uh, I hear you're interested in buying the Pussycat Parlor, one of them classy uh, emporiums like that. That, uh, that deal fell through. They wanted a ton of cash. Besides those girly, girly joints, you know, they attract a very, very weird clientele. I figure, look, I'm going into the restaurant business. I don't want any ladies of the evening walking around the tables, you know what I mean? The truth of the matter is I like this joint. It's nice and cozy, good food. Listen, uh, you wouldn't be interested in selling the joint, would you? <laughs> you don't understand, Eddie. This place isn't just a place of business. This is, uh, this is my home. Excuse me, I got things to do in the kitchen. I can't believe you're going off to college tomorrow. Are you going to get sentimental on me? I'm acting like a mother, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell you what. You finish up here and I'll go make us some General Foods International coffee. How'd you know I was in the mood for Swiss mocha? When weren't you in the mood for chocolate? You know, I'm going to miss these times. Are you going to get sentimental on me? <laughs> With General Foods International coffees. Oh, yes. we won. Okay, you guys set the table. I'll make the chicken. I'll make the potatoes. Potatoes? Uh-uh. Stovetop stuffing. Stovetop. My team likes potatoes. Want a bit? We'll make both. Okay. <laughs> Luckiest catch. Hey, this stuffing's terrific. Sure beats potatoes. I know. Pass me hey. some. No one's touched the potatoes. <laughs> I noticed. Instead of potatoes, serve stovetop stuffing and watch it disappear. Here you go, Jim. Nachos. Something to keep you uh, going while you wait for your friends. Thanks, Sid. But Jim, is uh, everything okay? Yeah, I'm just tired. I've been working my tail off at the theater. But we have an opening in a couple of days. Hey, listen, uh, can I ask you something? Sure. How many tickets do you want? Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's not about tickets. It's about Val. Uh, did Val say anything to you about Buffy Revere? Like what? Like about the money you borrowed from Buffy for your personal expenses. Sid, we talked about that, and don't worry about it. I know that that was a mistake, but you leave that to her. Oh, felt like such a jerk telling her something you didn't want her to know. It was actually an advantage. I shouldn't have kept it a secret. I mean, Val didn't care whether I was getting a loan from Buffy or not. <sighs> Shows you how dumb I am with women, still. Yeah, but all the same, you told me to keep my big mouth shut, and I didn't. Yeah, well, shouldn't burden other people with your secrets. Besides, Buffy was never a threat to Val. Buffy's got a new boyfriend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a new Johnny Gentry. <laughs> hey, how are you, kids? How are you? Come on, Jody. Sit down. I'm good and hungry, I'll tell you uh, that. Oh, well, then I will send over one of our very best waitresses. Oh, <clears throat> Missy. Hi, guys. Hello. How y'all feeling tonight? Well, Jody and I are great. 
I'm not so sure about our friend Jim, though. Yeah, you do seem kind of depressed. Is everything okay at the theater? Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine at the theater. Except for this. What is it? That's from Kathy Kane, the ingenue at the theater. Yeah, I remember Kathy, the one who wasn't feeling well. Mm-hmm. Well, according to this, she sounds really sick. Homesick. She decided she couldn't take the life on the road, and she got on the big bus home this afternoon. Well, that's awful. You guys open in a couple of days. Yeah, that's one of the disadvantages of a small company. If somebody leaves, you're in big trouble. I hope it wasn't my fault, Jim. She didn't take my direction too well. No, no, I'm sure that's not the reason. I mean, it really sounds like she missed her family. Well, she sure is apologetic. Well, she probably feels awful about letting you all down. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Um. Can we have something to eat, please? I am starving. Sure. Hey, gringo. The nacho si bueno, huh? Yeah, I think we'll have a big dish of these for the two of us. Okay. okay. Um, I'll, I'll be right back. Um, Cliff suggested something in case she hadn't gotten well that maybe you ought to give Mitzi a crack at it. Well, the thoughts crossed my mind. Well? I mean, is it such a far-fetched idea? Besides, it would make Mitzi's lifelong dream come true. Yeah, great, but there's some problems involved. Well, she certainly doesn't have any experience. The only time she's been on a stage was in a high school auditorium. So? She can act, and you know that. Yeah, but can she handle the opening of a theater? Can she learn all those lines? Mitzi is a very quick study. Come on, who knew everybody else's lines when you were opening the drama school? That's right, but does she know this role? <laughs> and we've only got a couple days before opening. That's over 200 lines. 212. What'd you say? The part of Angela has 212 lines. I counted them. When? Well, when I heard Jim, you know, was doing this show at the Whitney, and I read the play from cover to cover, and I've been to all the rehearsals. That's right. You've been at all the rehearsals since the start. Oh, you must know the play very well, then. Oh, yeah, I know it by heart. All of it? All of it. Well, um, I guess I better get back to work. Miss. Do you really know the ingenue's part by heart? I sure do. You want to hear some? Yes, Mitz, I do. Sore throat? Say ah. Chlor ah septic. The ah in chloroseptic is for fast temporary relief of minor sore throat pain. Chlor ah septic. Doctors and pharmacists have been recommending chloroseptic for over 20 years. When your throat hurts, say ah. Chlor ah septic. Liquid lozenges and children's chloroseptic. Fast relief for sore throat pain. Ah. Raise your hand. You got it. Raise your hand. You know it. You feel confident, secure. Raise your hand. You feel dry now. Raise your hand. You know why now. Raise your hand. Sure. You've got it. That sure, secure, confident feeling. Because each sure gives you enough protection to help feel dry all day. Confident, confident, dry and secure. Raise your hand, raise your hand, if you're sure. Did you brush your teeth yet? Math test tomorrow. Can't help you with metrics. I thought you knew everything. <laughs> yeah, I do about some things, like cavities. Oh. I know you could get even fewer than I did. How do you know that? Because I know Advanced Formula Crest has fluoristat. So? Compared to the Crest I grew up on, it's even tougher. My homework's tougher, too. <laughs> Quit worrying. You always make Mom and me real proud. With Crest, your kids could have even fewer cavities than you did. Well, one of the things that I really love about this house is that it's so mellow and comfortable. You know, it's the only word I can think of. <laughs> Like well-ripened cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that. Has it been in the family long? Oh, ages. It's practically the ancestral mansion. Although part of the family originally came from Scotland. And the other half from Spain. Quite a mixture of temperaments in this family. What's left of it, anyway. That's right. The two of you are the last survivors, aren't you? Yes, that's exactly the right word. Well, it seems to me that people from fine old families sort of have an obligation to keep the family name alive. Oh, did you get that, Ian? Raven thinks you're to live up to your obligations and get married. And, of course, the same thing applies to your illustrious name, Mr. Whitney. Well, I don't know how really important it is to preserve a name. I also think it's unfair. What is? Well, men are the only ones in a position to preserve the name. Women give up their name when they get married. I agree with you a thousand percent. I think it's completely wrong. 
know about that. I gave up my name gladly. About three times. <laughs> yes, but you've got it back now, don't you? Thank heaven. What was your collection like, Raven? Uh, her collection of scalps, you mean. <laughs> Manners, Mr. Whitney? Well, <clears throat> right now I'm using my maiden name again, but uh, my name used to be Raven Alexander Jameson Swift Whitney. <laughs> No relation to present company, fortunately. Fortunately. Yes. Of course, I heard the incredible incident of the man who took your place, Skye. You must still be feeling the effects of it all. Oh. No, I think Skye has adjusted rather well. He's been too busy to do any brooding. Skye, you haven't told anyone about your new acquisition. Yes, I hear it's all official now, Skye, that you're the new owner of WMON. Oh. Congratulations. Cheers! I think I'll it's drink wonderful. That. I think all men should work. How about women? Only if they have to. Is it true, Valerie, that you're in business for yourself? Oh, yes. Valerie's a photographer, one of the best in town, in fact. How marvelous. I wish I had a profession of some kind. In a way, I think it's better for a woman than a man. A man can always dig ditches or work on freighters, <laughs> but when a woman has a profession... I don't know about that. I think that a woman sort of gives up some of her femininity when she works. Well, the profession that I would recommend right now for women would be uh, computers. Yeah, really? <laughs> oh, Why? Ian is slightly mad on the subject. Computers! Speaking of computers, you promised me that you would show me how to play that computer chess game. Yes, I did, just this afternoon. Well, why don't we go do it now before the coffee is served? Well, all right, if everybody will excuse us for a moment. Excuse us. Valerie, I'd love to hear something about the education you received in Europe. Well, I was born here, but we moved to Europe when I was very young. And so I've been educated. Uh-oh, boy. Uh, the program's already in the computer. Now all we have to do is... Oh, I have one little confession to make. I don't know anything about chess. Oh, it's perfectly easy. I could teach you if you like. Well, I would love to have you teach me, Ian, but I don't know if I really have the patience. Of course you have. Now, just watch. Huh? That's all you do, huh? Okay, let's see. <laughs> this is great. What a good idea you had. It was a good idea that we had. Because frankly, Raven, I've wanted to get you alone ever since you got into this house. Even if it was just for a moment. So I stayed at the university in Switzerland and majored in photography. Oh, I had such a marvelous teacher there. He was really a fine photographer in his own right. I'd love to see your work sometime. Well, I'm not exactly collectible. I mean, I do commercial work now. You know, advertisements or catalog work. Occasionally, I do a portrait. If, if you'll excuse me for just a moment, I'd like to see what this game looks like for myself. Excuse me. those old familiar dinners brush up on your chicken just blend two parts heinz 57 sauce and one part honey brush up spirits too and you've got a sensational glaze for most any kind of meat brush up on your hair make a little extra for dipping for a lively taste that's new brush up with heinz 57 sauce and honey takes just a few seconds adds just the right spice brush up Was Princess Grace a victim of a witch's curse on Monaco's royal family? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. What's the story behind Prince Andrew's X-rated new love? This week's National Enquirer tells you. What was the gripping human story behind the Tylenol tragedies? How can you avoid the ten worst fashion mistakes? It's in the Enquirer. Is this Dallas Star's marriage headed for the scrap heap? Find out in the Enquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me.
one life to live. We have something between us, Karen. Man, I don't know what you're fantasizing about in that sick mind of yours, but I am going to marry Larry. How come you're not married already? Back in... One Life to Live, weekdays. Ian extends his apologies. Two gentlemen have come to call. He should be out in a minute. I wonder if it was about Mr. Foley. Oh, I thought all that business was ended, since he obliged everyone by getting himself killed. Yes, but maybe they've learned something more about him. Oh, yes, that's right. The two of you do have one thing in common. Mm. You're both victims of the same man. Yes. But I'm sure that's the only thing we have in common. Well, it must have been a terrible experience for both of you. I didn't enjoy it very much. Well, I didn't enjoy it very much either, but it did have its benefits. What do you mean? Well, if Mr. Foley hadn't brought me to this house, I would never have met your wonderful and charming brother. I really wish I could help you gentlemen, but it seems only logical to me that Foley must have taken his diary with him. It seemed that way to us too, Mr. Devereaux, since he obviously thought it was important. Even though he didn't know what it meant. But have you any idea what he was looking for? We're uh, not entirely sure, and uh, even if we were, that would come under the heading of classified information. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, forgive me for prying. Well, no. No apologies needed. I, I can understand why you're curious. After all, it was your house he was using. The point is, we had the police lab do an extensive search of the wreckage. They examined every inch of the scene to find signs of that diary. They didn't come up with anything. No trace of the book at all. That's why I think he must have left it here when he ran out of the house. But, my dear Chief Mallory, surely you're not insisting on an inch-by-inch inch search of my house. We have special men that could come. I'm sure I don't have to remind you that this house is full of treasures, antiques, fine artworks and books. One butterfingered detective could cost me thousands of dollars. No, I'm afraid what you're asking is... All we're asking, Mr. Devereaux, is that you yourself conduct the search as thoroughly as you can manage, realizing that you may help us resolve a matter of grave national importance. Well, I am impressed. All right, gentlemen, I'll do my best. Great. I would appreciate it if you could do that as soon as possible. Call me when you find it. Certainly, Chief Mallory. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll say good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Devereaux. And uh, again, accept our apologies for interrupting your dinner. still be here. What? Jefferson Brown's diary. Foley may have left it here. But it's worthless, isn't it? They got nothing from it. Yeah, but maybe we can do more than that. Maybe I can find the key to the cipher. But we've got to find it first. <laughs> Give it the full treatment from Vidal Sassoon. Extra gentle shampoo, protein remoisturizer, and extra protection finishing rinse. Specially formulated for dry hair or to help restore the body and silky shine that is sensitive perming, bleaching, heat styling can steal away. Get the sensitive treatment for your sensitive hair from Vidal Sassoon. Because if you don't look good, we don't look good. Airwick presents some smelly reasons why you need a rug and room deodorizer. Rover who's all over. The old fogey stogey. The damp musties. Once these odors get trapped in your rug, they're in your room. So you need Airwick Carpet Fresh. Just sprinkle Carpet Fresh powder on, wait a few minutes and vacuum. It overcomes the source of odors in your carpet. Your room has a fresh, clean smell. Carpet Fresh. America's number one rug and room deodorizer. Tonight, diamonds are Jack's worst friend when he's the innocent pawn in a jewel heist on Three's Company. Then Judy gets fired when she ruins her computer. But Dora Lee comes up with a crazy scheme to get her rehired on 9 to 5. After Jennifer wins millions in a London casino, then winds up in a deadly scheme that reaches across the Atlantic on Heart to Heart. Join us tonight on ABC.
tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, tracking that Tylenol killer. Max Robinson reports on Chicago's biggest criminal investigation. Are the police getting any closer? Plus, the mystery of Princess Grace. New information on her tragic death. ABC News uniquely qualified. She's oh so good at being oh so bad. Meet sultry and sensational Joan Collins of Dynasty in the new TV Guide. This is Stormfield coming up for you on the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, a debate over a hot issue. Twenty years ago, the U.S. Supreme Court declared it was unconstitutional to allow prayer in school. Ever since then, people have been fighting to get it back in. The latest battlefront is New Jersey. I'm Tracy Egan. I'll have a report. Also, why a Long Island man wants to die, the latest on the search for a prime suspect in the Tylenol killings, and why your child should wear a scary costume this Halloween at 5. Wherever you are now, Ma, I hope you're sitting down. I'm not using Brillo anymore. I switched to SOS. SOS has special things in it to make it cut grease better. You know that terrible burnt-on grease. SOS even works better on that. You should see Grandma's roasting pan. It hasn't felt that clean in 40 years. I know you like Brillo. But, Ma, you've been wrong about other things. You also like Mo.